I think you're gonna like today again. I think I spread this stuff out because it's so short. But before we talked about, we'll see who remembers this. We talked about activities before, but not for solutions, not for solvents. We talked about the activities for what? That's all this stuff. Gases. Gases. And we didn't call it activity. Fugacity. We called it fugacity. Right. So now we're going to play the same game, but with uh, solutions, solvents and solutes. Now, if, if you go back, uh, let's get my notes here. We had flip over to the previous page. We had Raoult and Henry, right? Let's see. Didn't we talk about Raoult and Henry? Where did we talk about Raoult and Henry? Yeah, way on the very first, very first day. We had this ideal solutions, right? And then we had Raoult. How do you spell Raoult? R-A, that's why I'm looking at these notes. U-L-T. So weird. I guess. Arult and uh, Henry's. Now, which was for the solute? Which was for the solvent? Arult was, was for solvent. Good. So that means Henry is for solute. And the expressions we had was PJ equals. I think it was PJ star. XJ, remember that? And then for Henry, we had that glioscopic constant. PJ equals XJ KB or something like that. Or we held it, we had a KJ, but okay. <clears throat> so when we messed with fugacities, we had this ideal gas law equation, and <clears throat> the we're skipping all the math, but the idea is is Let's use the same expressions, the same equations to describe, the, to describe what's going on. And at the time, we're using ideal gas law. So then we introduced fugacities. And instead of sticking P in everywhere, we you could use F, fugacity. Same idea here. When we have these, we're st sticking to the idea of ideal dilute solutions, but we want to use activities. We want to use these expressions. We want to be able to use Raoult for the solvent and Henry for the solute. So this is how they're going to do it. They're going to say, OK, so let's talk about the solvent first. And here's their activities. So it's not fugacid anymore. It's activity, because it's not a gas. <clears throat> and they say it's PJ over PJ star. Well, doesn't that look really similar to reorganizing Raoult? Yeah. Right? PJ over PJ. Star. What was PJ star again, Gloriana? The what of the pure solvent. The its vapor. vapor pressure. And PJ is Mel in Raoult's law. What was PJ again? The vapor pressure. The vapor pressure of that of the solvent. Right. And that <coughs> you divide those two and you get XJ Kelly and XJ was the mole fraction of the solvent. So what we're messing with here is kind of the effective Activity is kind of the effective mole fraction. But they say they want us to use this equation for activity, talking about solvents. right? And then they said, hey, hold on. <coughs> <coughs> that this activity is the mole fraction, right? Because we kind of, they're the same expression. But they throw in this, their fudge factor, the activity coefficient. So they're, they're saying both of these equations are valid at the same time. They're both equally valid. They're the same thing. So 
just something that we have to be aware of. It's kind of funky, but that's what they're doing. Okay, so you can get the activity two different ways. One is just divide the its vapor pressure by the pure. The other way is multiply the mole fraction times your little fudge factor. Your activity I'm not supposed to say fudge factor. I'm supposed to say activity coefficient. Right. Okay. And then for Raoul, it's pretty much the same thing, right? <clears throat> oh, that's what I've been talking about. This, so I didn't have to rewrite all this. It's right here, <laughs> right? Where's Henry? Down, Down the bottom. Se new section. Here's Henry. Okay, same story, except notice how in, in Henry's law, right? You solve for mole fraction, and on the, in the denominator is that constant. So, likewise, solute to get things to work. Both these expressions are, again, they're valid, all at the same time, simultaneously valid. You can get the activity two different ways, OK, for a solute. Is there anything else that I wanted to mention here? Let's see. So again, when we're talking about uh, using these expressions, Raoul and Henry, again, the terminology is ideal dilute solutions. That's the, that's the talk. So when you hear ideal dilute solutions, you're supposed to be thinking, oh, Henry's law for solutes, Raoul's law for solvents. Okay. I think the only thing left to really talk about is to get us ready for the homework. <clears throat> when you're talking about X sub J, whether it's the solute or the solvent, so I guess let's just define it. Let's call A the solvent, and let's call B the solute. So I could be talking about XA or XB. These are referring to the mole fractions of the solvent and the solute where? Because remember, we're talking a lot about these vapor pressures. Seems to me that you have two things to worry about. Right? You've got the, the vapor phase, and then you've got your solution. So these X's, XA and XB, are describing the composition where? In the solution. That's where these guys are. Mole fraction of the solute, mole fraction of the solvent. What symbols, I don't know if you got this out of the reading, on Shelby. What symbols do they use to describe the composition in the vapor phase? The mole fraction of the solvent, the mole fraction of the solute. They didn't use X's. They used A's. Yeah, the A's represent the solvent and B represent the solute. There's little subscripts, but they didn't use X's. They used Y. They use Y's, okay? So let's, let's play around with, with this a little bit. So in that vapor phase, <clears throat> in that vapor phase, you've got a, uh, let me see, you can see it better. You have a total pressure, right? You've got mole fractions of, of, of the solvent, of the solute. You'd also have partial pressures, right? The partial pressure of the solvent, partial pressure of the solute, right? So if you play around with this a little bit, you could say the total pressure is really equal to what plus what? PA plus PB. Um, 
What else could we mess with? Oh, how do you get YB in the first place? How could you get YA in the first place? Something over something. The mole fraction of the solute in the vapor phase. Mm -mm. And we're going to be playing around with, with the pressures. Uh, something over the total. What's over the total? Not mole fraction. Because mole fraction is right here. Oh, We're trying to solve for mole partial fraction. Pressure. Partial pressure. And partial pressure of? B. B. So the, the mole fraction in the vapor phase of the solute would be the partial pressure of the solute divided by the total pressure. Likewise, for the mole, <coughs> mole fraction in the vapor phase of the solvent, it's partial pressure all over the total pressure. Okay. So, how could we play with this some more? We've got Henry's Law. Just to make sh sure you're following here, well, if you had the the solution, how would you write? <clears throat> now, this is supposed to be for the. This expression is supposed to be for A's or B's. It's supposed to be for A. A's. So then you could write P A is equal to. Mel, finish that. P P A star, and X A. All right. This is supposed to be for, see, that's why I should have wrote a J there. That's what they wanted, a J. This is supposed to be for the solute. So we can write what expression? Kelly, we could write what expression? Partial pressure of the solute in the vapor phase is equal to? Uh, well, this one, Henry's. So it would be x. Yeah, mole fraction of the solute in the solution times yeah, KB, just KB, right? Some constant you have to look up. So these are <coughs> just equations that we have to get used to using. Okay. That's about it. Review day. All right. You got an exam. So what we do after <clears throat> after this, I gotta look and see, cause someone said someone counted up the days and said we're gonna be only halfway through chapter eight or something. So I'll have to figure out what we're gonna do. Our test is on Monday. Wednesday. Friday is this day. And then then our exam would be Monday. All right. There's, yeah, there is class next week, right? Mm -hmm. It's the school districts that don't have class. Mm -hmm. We have class Monday and Tuesday, mm -hmm. right? Well, Monday will be the day of the exam. We're having Friday. Yeah, so Friday. What did I write? Yeah, Friday is, is our review. Monday will be the exam. And then I'll tell you what's going to happen after that. So you're going to be on pins and needles over Thanksgiving break. I'll figure it out before then, don't worry. We have one lab left, right? Technically, yeah. <coughs> oh, let's look and let's look at the calendar, and see if we can just not have. If there's enough weeks left, we can get by with it. We don't have. We have Thanksgiving week Tuesday, and then a week after that, nothing. So two Tuesdays left. Yes, we have two Tuesdays, and there's no lab cleanup or lab checkout for PCAM, and there's just one lab left, right? So that opens up the exam to be taken on Tuesday, too. Wow. So this opens up some possibilities for me. So, so
So well, I'll let you know the big game plan. So we already have time with you, but you I don't know. I'll let you know. If I can save a lecture day and use it for something really extremely interesting, we'll do that. Right? Doesn't this just increase your heart rate a little bit, knowing all the possibilities to wrap up PCHEM 1? OK. So we are on number 18. Solution of bromine, carbon bromine in carbon tetrachloride. Behaves in an ideal dilute solution. So you know what that means. So we have bromine and carbon tet, right? Calculate the vapor pressure of each component. So that means we want to find what symbols. Yeah, essentially P A and P B, right? But I don't know if that would get. I don't know if it's more confusing yet for you to write PA or to write PC. Right? I don't know what's more confusing for you. Right? But the total pressure. Well, that one's kind of easy. PT. How about the composition of the vapor phase? That's the next one. The composition of the vapor phase. What symbols are they talking about for that one? Y. The Ys. Right? Isn't that what they would want, those two? And what about this? What does this have to do with anything? Oh, but they told us what the mole fraction of bromine is. We know what one of them? Do we know? Look, are you following me so far? Like I wrote down these Ys because they want to know the composition of the. They want to know the composition of the vapor phase. So I wrote down the Ys and wrote question marks. Did they tell us what one of them is? Because they're talking about the solution, right? Because when you say the, this is where English gets confusing, I think. When you say, oh, the concentration is this, you're never referring to the concentration in the vapor phase. You're just assuming everyone realizes it's the solution. And mole fraction is just another word for composition, so it's just a funky way of saying concentration. But that's got to be the X, right? So. I guess you should say when x br2 is what number? 0.05. Does it change? Does it matter? Would you think it would matter? Why would they even tell us that? You can find the pressure. Yeah, because if you change the mole fraction of bromine in the residue. In the solution, in the that's going to change everything, right? That's going to change the amount in the vapor phase, everything. So it it matters. So it's even you have all the relations you need, you can do this, right, Gloria? You can do this.
First, they want you to find the vapor pressure of each component, find the total pressure, right? So where would you start? Just start at the top here. How would you find this one? The hint is this, ideal dilute solutions. We're trying to find <coughs> PA, so mm -mm. ideal dilute solution. So Raoult. Raoult. And that was the partial pressure of the solvent is equal to? Of the And x, right? So that's how you get the first one. What do you plug in for the pure vapor pressure? Do they give it to you? Yeah, you've got it. What do you plug in for the mole fraction? That's it, exactly. All right, 0.95. So what did we, <coughs> yeah, just give your answer on tour. Oh. So we kind of missed one, right? We should have wrote what plus what equals one. So it would be x, a, and x, b. So that means we could also write what equals one? Because we have compositions. Got to write those, right? So the the because remember these are mole fractions in the vapor phase. These aren't totals or anything. It's just mole fraction in the vapor phase. Mole fraction, add them up, you should get one. Or mole fractions in the solution, add them up, you should get one. Are there any of these that you're not sure how to get? And they told us, didn't they tell us what the ebullioscopic constant is? Yeah, so that's easy. How do you get P total? Add them, Add them up. Yeah. How would you get the mole fractions in the vapor phase? Yeah, there it is. The partials over the totals. So write down your game plan on how to get each of those so you don't forget. They're still at home, I think. It's hard to get around for me to eat fruit, so it just looks like so much work. I gotta peel it. Really? It just looks like so much work. Uh,
Okay, so you okay with 18? see really much. <clears throat> you have everything you need, don't you? What we talked about? How do you get activity again? So that's one way. But we can't use this one because we don't know the. We don't know the. Yeah, that's when you're going to have to use. I think so. And then you can use the other one to get the coefficients. All right, so I would do this one first. Mel, you don't have to do your homework if you peel my oranges for me. Oh. Man, my kids don't have to do anything at home. We have a, our mother-in-law's living with us. She peels their oranges and everything. Why, why can't she peel your orange? <laughs> I feel so guilty. I don't want to ask her for anything because that's all she does is all day work, 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 work. Cleaning, washing dishes, clothes, I don't know. God, I don't do anything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. That's what I'm trying to do. Okay, so we're okay with 19? Everyone's got a plan? 14. I like the freezing point of glass of a glass of water. You dumped in seven and a half grams of sucrose. So if you didn't dump anything in, it should freeze at what temp? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, if you want to do Kelvin, 273 Kelvin, right? And then if you dump something in it, it's going to freeze where? Lower temp, right? Okay, now how did you calculate that change? It's a colligative property. You remember to that talk? Remember what it was? Freezing point depression. And it was what? Delta T What'd they call it? K prime, K K prime and then Okay. So let's say we know how to use this equation. 
So you multiply the k prime, whatever you're talking about there, times xb, whatever you're talking about there, you get a number. What do you do with that number? it from zero. If it, would, if it wouldn't have been water, if it would have froze at, I don't know, 20 degrees Celsius, and your delta T is in Celsius, then you subtract it from 20, right? Because it has to be freezing point depression. So that's what you do with this, with this change. You have to subtract it from the pure free, freezing point. Yeah, you have to subtract delta T. So you, you solve for delta T. Mm -hmm. And then whatever you get, that's what you subtract from the pure freezing point because it's freezing point depression. So it's not going to calculate the new freezing point for you. It's just going to calculate the, the depression, the change. OK, so how do we get this stuff? Where do you get this? Vaporization. Oh, yeah. So you can calculate it. R T star. So what did you say? Squared over delta enthalpy of vaporization. Fusion. Sorry. Yeah, we're freezing. So there's that way. There's an easier way though, because they're assuming you're going to do this. I think. I don't think they're expecting you to calculate it. Because if you do it this way, you, what do you have to look up? Enthalpy of fusion, right? You have to look it up. So, well, why not just look up? the constant in the first place? The cryoscopic constant. And look it up for what? Do you look it up for sucrose? Or do you look it up for water? Look it up for water. Because these are supposed to be really what solutions? Really dilute. The solute isn't supposed to matter, right? These ideal dilute solutions. The identity of the solute isn't supposed to matter. So. I think that'd be the easiest, because since they told you the compound, you're supposed to look up, Google it or whatever, that constant. But you know, if you don't want to, you just want to calculate it, fine, that would work. But then you got to look up the enthalpy of, enthalpy of fusion for water. Either way, you should get the same number. But then you got to multiply it by XB. Now, what the heck is XB? Mole fraction of the solute. So how would you get that? Shelby, how would you get the mole fraction of the solute, XB? Oh, I picked on you already. Jeffrey, if I pick, Jeffrey, how would you get the mole fraction of the solute? Um, the moles of water plus the moles of sucrose. Uh, the and then on top, the other the total gravity. Oh, that was the total, oh, the total yeah. moles. OK, so moles of water and moles of sucrose. I'll uh, just write sucrose. That's this stuff. That's on the bottom. Then what? Um, the moles of. Is it XB? I thought it was molality. Yeah, molality. So it's not an if, X. If you're using the kinescopic constant, then it's X. And then it's um, doing X times B. Yeah. So it's I'm pretty sure it was molality. I think that's the one that would make the most sense. Where is that stuff? Okay. Boiling point. Here's freezing point. Yeah, I think this is the one they want you to use. All right. I get either one would work, but this seems more like more work, doesn't it? You can calculate your K prime. That looks like more work to me. So I would say look. But if you can't find it, you don't have any choice. KFB. Let's assume you can. Well, you have the internet. How could you not find it? All right? It's in the book. It's in the book, too. So let's not do this one. OK. So that changes this. So here, you said that's in the book. How do you get molality again? So 
So moles of what? Sucrose. So figure out what that is. Divide that by kilograms of solvent. And that solvent is? Agua. Agua. Yeah. So it's not so bad. <coughs> How do you get the kilograms of the Oh, yeah, that's a good question. They didn't give us the mass of the water. They gave us this funky thing. You have to remember what equals what. One, one centimeter cubed is the same as one milliliter. They're both units of volume. They're both equal no matter what it is. So a cubic centimeter is a milliliter. So that means you have 250 milliliters. That means you have how many grams? 250 grams, because the density is one. So then you have 0.25 kilograms. And then convert those grams of sucrose into moles, because they told you the, what sucrose is. So get the moles. And plug it in. Because it's 250 milliliters, which is 250 grams, which would be 0.25 kilograms. So 15 is kind of confusing, I think. I tried to give these hints, and I think I might have just made it more confusing. I'm trying to get what the back of the book wants. The back of the book wants your answer in 15 for solubility to be in grams per kilogram. So grams of what per kilogram of what in this 15? What would you guess? Right, because here's the question. Well, the grams of entropy, the grams of entropy over the kilograms of density. Exactly. So that, I don't know if I helped you in that or not. But the back of the book, this is how they give their answer. That's how they describe solubility. Grams of anthocene all over kilograms of benzene. <coughs> That's what they want you to get it in. OK. And then this ideal solubility. I don't think we've ever used that expression. Where was I think there was some big, ugly equation for it. Yeah, there was. I have it on page two. And they call it ideal because It's, it doesn't really take into account, I don't think it really takes into account like dissolves like. I mean, they're really kind of not caring about interactions and things, but let me write it down here. Natural log of XV. This ideal solubility, there is an equation for it. It's on page two of our notes.
আছে It's really just a plug and chug question, except you've got to worry about the units. Because when they say this is the ideal solubility, they're really referring to what variable in that expression? Xb. So the expression is giving you the answer for ideal solubility in terms of what's Xb? What is it? Mole fraction. Mole fraction. So it's giving you the answer. So first. Right, get XB. So you're, and the units of that are going to be what over what? The units of XB. Moles of anthracene. Moles So once you finally, first can you get XB? Do you see how to get XB? Any, any problem there? OK. Well, just watch your units. How are you gonna go from how are you gonna go from X B to the units of their answer? Molecular weight. That would get you. Kilograms of benzene. I th are they assuming? Oh, we forgot. I forgot to name. This is so hard to remember this stupid expression. Remember we derived this? Because doesn't this look really similar? Kilograms of solvent in the bottom. That's really similar to what? Molality. Molality was what little symbol? Little little b. It's really similar to little b. So how do you get little b if you know xb? This concept preview. I don't know how I keep forgetting this. What was the expression? BMA. That's how you get it. Because once you get xb, Right? Solve for little b, and then you can get the units what they want by doing what Mal said, use molar mass. Stop by if you have any questions. But, uh, Professor Smith? Yep. Um, for that last one, could we, uh, could we just do like change in T equals KFB and then solve for T? If we look up KF. They, they said ideal solubility, though, so I thought I had to use this for number 15, right? So I think they, I think you have to, you have to use, since they use the word ideal solubility, I think you have to use this ideal solubility equation. Because that's how this was, the book gives you an equation specifically for ideal solubility. So I think you've got to do it this way. <coughs> 